What's up guys, this is Chris from Katana. So today I'm gonna to talk about a situation where you're a manufacturer, but you make your own products and you sell online through multiple e-commerce channels. So in this particular use case, uh, a lot of people have been using a software called TradeGecko. And TradeGecko is essentially a platform where you could plug in multiple e-commerce uh, softwares uh, that you sell your products through onto the internet and you can manage all your product inventory inside of TradeGecko. So if you're a manufacturer and you use Katana, there is now an integration that allows you to plug your Katana manufacturing, where you track your raw materials and your production, into TradeGecko, so you can finish your products inside Katana, send them to TradeGecko inventory, so you can just basically get on with your e-commerce sales. So today I just want to put together a quick video to show how to set that process up in TradeGecko since that's where the connection begins and uh, basically demonstrate how it works in general. So we'll go ahead and get started on the TradeGecko side. So if you set up a TradeGecko account with a certain email, make sure that email is the exact same that you use for Katana. And then inside of TradeGecko during the onboarding process, it's going to prompt you to set up your account. And during the setup process, you're going to have to confirm your base currency, which needs to be the same as it is in Katana. So in my case, it's US dollars. And in TradeGecko, it's US dollars. Email login is exactly the same. So I guess to get started with that, the best way to proceed forward on this setup is once you have the email and base currency set up in both Katana and TradeGecko, you can also go into your settings, actually into your apps here. And from the apps page, you're going to go to Katana. And it'll show up here as in the list. And then you can get the app. And then it'll take you to the home page where you'll authorize it from TradeGecko. Enter your password. job done you're connected so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna set up some products inside of Katana and then start to work it out from the trade gecko side so if you haven't set up products before in Katana we'll make it easy let's say you're a shirt manufacturer and uh, let's go ahead and dump the demo data so we don't have to deal with that Okay, magic completed, demo data's gone. And let's go in and set up some of our first materials. So let's create a new material card. I'm gonna set up two materials. The first one is gonna be called blue dye. And we're going to make a unit of measurement in liters. And we're gonna set a default purchase price of let's say 20 US dollars per liter. That's easy. And then we're gonna make our next, this by the way, this default purchase price is only an initial uh, default purchase price that automatically gets presented to POs for your suppliers. But that can change over time, of course, when you buy it. Uh, we'll set up another material card. This one is going to be, let's say, plain t-shirts. These are measured by the piece. Let's say you buy one of those at a price of two US dollars. Pretty simple. And now let's go and set up a product. So for this product, I'm going to create like uh, a very simple one. We'll call this a blue t-shirt. And I'm also going to apply a variant code for it. We'll call it uh, BL-T, BLT, blue t-shirt. So that makes sense. And we'll put a regular default sales price on it of, well, let's say $20. That's easy. Go to the product recipe. What does it take to make a blue t-shirt? It takes a plain t-shirt which takes one of those units to do that. And it takes some blue dye, which requires about, um, let's do 0 0.05 liters. And that'll give you a general cost of one US dollar per t-shirt. Uh, all right, perfect. So now we have a recipe set up. Maybe we wanna set up a product operation where we call it uh, dyeing. And in this operation, we're going to use a mixer and the process will cost $5 an hour. 
and the time will take approximately, I don't know, 20 minutes to make one t-shirt. And that generates a cost of 1.67 US dollars for one t-shirt. So now we've basically got a recipe in our manufacturing operations and a product with an SKU or a variant code. And what we'll need to do is we'll need to set that up from the trade gecko side now that everything is connected and sorted. So going back into trade gecko where we set up our apps, everything is connected based on what I can see here. Let's see that. Let me refresh the page. Make sure that we are connected. All right. So now it says we are installed. So what do I want to do next? I want to take a look at my inventory page here. And on my inventory page, I have quite a few different products, but let's say that I want to add a new product here in this case. So create my first product. Would you like to show us? Uh, I'll go ahead and pass the onboarding stuff. Okay, so the product name I'm going to call a blue t-shirt and I have to select a supplier. I need to add a new supplier and this supplier is going to be Katana. So that's kind of part of the entire setup. Uh, you need to make sure that the name of the supplier is Katana. So that way, whenever you generate a purchase order to get new products into Trade Gecko, it will generate that sales order in Katana. So basically what you're doing inside of Trade Gecko is you're creating a pay purchase order for a product and then that purchase order gets sent to Katana as a sales order. And then that sales order gets showed up inside of Katana as if it's available or not. If it isn't, great, you can make it. So then you make it. And then once it's marked as delivered, it shows up in your inventory as a final product inside of Trade Gecko. So let's go ahead and add an address, 123 ABC Road just to get the information that's needed and save it. So now we have a blue t-shirt. I'll go ahead back to my Katana page, have a closer look at my items, look at my products, look at BLT and BLT. We have the variant code BL-T. Go ahead and capture that as well and bring it here into Trade Gecko. So we'll put that SKU there, BL-T. That way at least we have a unique identifier for the product. Uh, we'll set up an initial stock. Uh, we'll set up an initial cost. It doesn't really matter at this point because those particular numbers will change. I'll show you that later on. Uh, all right, product variants. We'll not worry about those items. We'll go ahead and create a product. So our first product is now been created. So what do we have to do in this case is we have to uh, generate a purchase order inside of Trade Gecko to get that to show up inside of Katana. So where do we go to do that? We do that from our stock control section. We click on our purchase orders and it says create a new purchase order here, but I won't worry about that. That brings you into an add a new product page. So we'll create a new purchase order from this section and forget about that onboarding stuff. So now we can select a supplier here. So we're going to make the supplier Katana. This is extremely important for the integration to work. Make sure that you select that every time you order it or else it won't come into Katana. So what do we want to order? We want to order the BL, BL-T blue t-shirt. We want to bring in about, let's say we want to order uh, 20 of those, which will give us 21 after it's been created. Uh, we put in a item cost, say $5. Now we create that purchase order. Voila, already sorted, already done. And what happens in Katana? Let's take a look. So inside of Katana on the cell screen, it appears we have something here from Trade Gecko. And what does this show us exactly? It shows us that we have received this order, basically 20 pieces for five US dollars a piece. And it shows that we have no product availability. Uh-oh, that means we need to make it. So this is basically showing that this blue t-shirt is not in stock. So the first thing we can do is we can select a make to order here, or we can just, or we can also create a make to stock up here. It's kind of up to you. Depends on what workflows your business uses, whether you generate demand from inventory or you generate demand from your customers and you don't carry product inventory. Most people that use trade gecko might carry product inventory because they typically use it to manage inventory. So, Let's go ahead and create a make to stock order. 
So make the stock order inside of Katana will look something like this. We need to make a blue t-shirt and we want a quantity of approximately, uh, so instead of, instead of sending only 20, maybe I want to make 30 or maybe my general batch size is 50. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but let's say that we want to do it this way. Um, we'll go ahead and make 30 of these units. And then it basically pops up the ingredients list here. It says I need 30 pieces of plain white t-shirts. Uh, and I also need blue dye 1.5 liters, but I don't have any. Okay. That's a problem. This is where I begin to manage my raw material stock. And so I could put my raw material stock, uh, by creating purchase orders with my suppliers. So let's say that we want to go ahead and order in some plain t-shirts and we contact our shirt supplier. We go ahead and create a new one here. And then we order 30 units that works. And boom, we just generated a purchase order. Now the next level here is also from our paint supplier. We'll add him as a new one. And this person says we want one and a half liters, but maybe I want more than that. Maybe I want to order five units because that's what I typically buy from my um, paint supplier. Done. So now that's created two purchase orders and it shows that it has an expectation date to arrive by the middle of December. Today is the end of November, so two weeks. And we'll go ahead and take a look at our buy section where we have these open purchase orders and uh, they haven't been received yet. So what we'll do next is we'll go ahead and mark them as received. So what basically happened in this case is inside of our stock, you'll see that our, oh, we have some more onboarding. So inside of our stock, if we look at our material stock, we will now have five liters in stock and 30 pieces of plain t-shirts available. So now that we've done this, we can take a look at our manufacturing page for our make schedule and see that we have uh, this purchase order that's pending and we have existing material in stock and we can go ahead and produce for it. So let's go ahead and open that up. And get started on production. So we can start production to a work in progress. And once that work in progress is sorted, we can mark it as complete. And once it's marked as complete, the stock that's been created from the purchase order on TradeGecko, you'll actually see that in stock, those 30 pieces are leaving, uh, are available and ready to be sent to TradeGecko. And we have 20 of them committed from that purchase order from TradeGecko. And, and once we mark this as delivered, I'll show you here on our sell page, we can mark this as delivered. This will remove the final product goods from stock. The blue t-shirts we had here, we now have 10 pieces in stock from our manufacturing order and no more that are committed, but you can see that the stock movements did take place here from this purchase order where it removed 20 units. And that's it. So when we go back into Katana, or sorry, when we go back into our Trade Gecko page and we take a look at our stock of products, let's look at our inventory here. We will see that our blue t-shirt that came from, came from Katana increased by 21 units. And that will basically tie into all of your additional e-commerce platforms. So when you generate a sale in those other locations, it'll deduct from here but you can still manage your whole entire manufacturing process and raw material goods straight from Katana and tie it into your Trade Gecko account. Anyhow, that is effectively how everything works in the integration. And when you set, start selling, you'll see that this inventory of your final goods inside of Trade Gecko will reduce. And, uh, and that's essentially the use case for small manufacturers selling online. I hope that helps all of you Trade Gecko users who are looking for a manufacturing plugin. And uh, if you have any questions, you can shoot them on over to support at katanamrp.com. We'll be happy to help. And uh, there you go. All right. Have a good one.